Hey everyone, me Kevin here. There are six big shifts coming to the stock market and in this video I'm going to discuss what they are, when they're coming, and what I'm going to do about them. First, before we hit these six catalysts, let's hit two bits of news. JP Morgan just today revised its forecasts, now predicting a negative 1% GDP for quarter one 2021. This is actually a reduction of two and a half percentage points from their previous estimate when they thought we might see one and a half percent growth in January through March of 2021. However, they revised their growth way down to negative 1% and instead gave that growth to quarter two and quarter three of 2021. This really suggests that if we're going to be in the market, we'll probably want to be in the market before Q2 and Q3 of next year. So really it's these next four and a half-ish months here that we really want to be thinking hard about taking advantage of potentially some negative catalysts to get into the market more heavily if you're not already invested. And remember, the easiest way to dollar cost average into the market is something I love doing is every single time you get paid, every Friday or Thursday or whenever it is you get paid, you put money into the market first. <laughs> Literally put that money in first and then worry about the other stuff. Like to me, I look at it as like, oh, I get to go on a shopping spree. <laughs> All right. Uh, another headline is that Bill Ackman is hedging himself against the six catalysts that I'm about to talk about. For reference, Bill Ackman is a hedge fund manager. He was the guy who in March of 2020 went on every single TV show and on CNBC as much as possible to basically decry that the world was ending and that we should just short everything. Now, what's kind of ironic about this, and this really only came out after the fact, is that Bill Ackman, while he was screaming bloody murder, was actively shorting the crap out of the market. And his firm made a killing on Wall Street, creating panic while profiting off that panic. In fact, he was one of the guys that said, forget 45 days to slow the spread. Let's have a 30 day hardcore lockdown, close every business, lock everything down. Meanwhile, he's shorting the market. Yeah. Nice one, Bill Ackman. We <laughs> we're on to you now. Anyway, Bill Ackman, he ended up closing his short positions on March 23rd, which will forever go down as being the bottom of the coronavirus pandemic crash. So uh, I guess hats off to Bill for making money in that case. But uh, in terms of listening to the guys on TV and the talking heads on TV, you got to be a little bit skeptical with these dudes. This dude now is the same guy who says he's bullish on 2021 stocks, which I'll, I'll agree with him on that. I'm bullish for 2021 stocks. And he says he's taking a minor short position for the end of 2020 for the potential of a tragic crash. In other words, he doesn't heavily think that a tragic crash is coming, but he's hedging himself just in case. So let's talk about the catalysts first. And then let's talk about what should we do? Should we hedge? Should we make purchases? Should we just wait? Should we sell? What should we do? Well, I'll talk about that at the end. Let's for right now, get onto these six catalysts. All right, for these, these, these six catalysts are going to be very good or very bad for the market. And they might even interlace. We might get some good and some bad. And what I recommend that you do is take out your calendar for this and actually write these catalysts down because they're important. So. I talked about a few of these, by the way, in my course member live streams over the last few days. And if you haven't considered joining those courses yet, remember if you join any of the courses using that Black Friday month coupon code, whether it's the real estate course, the stocks and psychology courses, do yourself management course, the YouTube course to make money from home, you'll love what's inside. But no matter which course you get, you end up being able to join these live streams as well. So you get my ideas kind of as I formulate them and we have a discussion about those. And you can also email me, of course, for a bundle coupon at kevin at meetkevin.com. Now, these are all sorted chronologically, so it's not necessarily like the first one's the worst or the best thing that's going to happen. These are in chronological order. That's it. Uh, so we'll start with December 1st. On December 1st, we are going to get Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales data. And this will help us understand the consumer and consumer confidence. Remember, our economy is 70% made up of the consumer spending. So consumer spending is huge. Saving rates are higher right now than they were last year. So even though we're going through this pandemic, it kind of seems like we might have more capacity to spend, 
But then ironically, in October, retail spending actually fell. Now, some say that this is because people are preparing for another lockdown. Others say maybe people are just waiting for Black Friday sales. The one thing that we know with certainty is that when we look at the retail data, real estate does really well. Autos, especially used autos are doing very well and durables like Whirlpool washers and dryers and dishwashers are all doing very well. And some argue that this might continue. But no matter what happens, the reality is we will get a lot of consumer insights come December 1st. This is going to be really key because it's going to tell us how badly do people actually need stimulus because their spending will signify that. Now, I personally am a big proponent of stimulus. I believe that there are millions of people who need help, especially the unemployed. But spending behaviors will also be an indicator, especially for Republicans in Congress for this. And it could be an indicator for the stock market. If we see high sales and we smash sales expectations, the stock market is going to price that in. AKA smashed, smashed expectations, prices of stocks tend to go up. Now, we'll have this complete set of Black Friday data and a Cyber Monday data probably on December 1st. My guess is Black Friday is going to be a bust for in-person events. But online sales for Black Friday, Cyber Weekend, and Cyber Monday are going to be huge, beating expectations, especially at companies like Apple, Etsy, Amazon, Shopify, and more. I also think Pinterest is going to see some explosive Q4 advertising revenue, which is, you know, their platform is brilliant for. And the more advertising people spend on Pinterest, the better actually companies like Etsy end up doing because those ads tend to link to a lot of Etsy products, which kind of makes Pinterest a definite target along with the other ones mentioned. All right. So that's catalyst number one, and that comes up on December 1st. And I'm actually bullish on this catalyst. I, I think we're gonna smash every record that we've ever seen. The people who have been waiting to spend will spend. Uh, I do think there's a risk that we're going to disproportionately see, yay, more spending, retail was amazing, everybody must be doing great, but the reality is it could just be like those white collar workers who have been stuck inside all year long working from home that are spending more, and the people making under $40,000 a year are the ones getting screwed. And that is possible. It's not gonna be so good for stimulus. Uh, next, the next catalyst, December 8th through 9th. We expect to have FDA approval and immediate vaccine distribution within 24 hours of that approval. Remember the US government already has 100 million doses and vials ready to go. That they're going to start distributing within 24 hours of the FDA approval. The earliest we're expecting for FDA approval is December 8th through the 9th. Some are saying the middle of December, but my estimation is that this is going to be a very huge positive catalyst if we get a vaccine approved. Now, if there's a delay in vaccine approval or if there are any kind of negative outcomes, like, well, what about these side effects? Hey, you didn't tell us about this. You didn't tell us about this. That's going to obviously be very bad. My expectation though is this catalyst is going to be another boon for the market. I think we're going to end up seeing these vaccines get distributed so fast. We're gonna wake up one morning ago, it's approved. The next morning, we're going to feel like we're at the end of a movie, so to speak. Like, you know, the happy part of the movie where the movie begins ending and you see the National Guard giving people shots and everybody's lining up for vaccines. That's what I expect by the second week of December. That's going to be really good for the stock market. By the way, Moderna and Pfizer are really becoming exciting opportunities too. Uh, I'm actually considering taking my first leaps into biotech investments because of them and not because of the COVID drug. I think the stocks right now are too hyped up because of the COVID drugs. But at some point, if these stocks fall, keep this in mind, the Financial Times ran a wonderful piece on Moderna and they said that Moderna can basically use this mRNA technology to produce cells, like protein cells inside, well, I guess proteins inside of cells, uh, as, as simply as you can take a cassette out of a cassette player and put a different cassette in, which is really insane to hear because they say that, this is their quote, Moderna says a vaccine is probably the easiest thing they have ahead of them. And that instead of producing four to five drugs over the next five to 10 years through conventional means, this mRNA cassette style production for drugs and vaccines over the next four to five years might mean that they'll be able to produce hundreds of drugs and vaccines. Like literally this, this mRNA technology is so much of a breakthrough for, for biotech that this could be an insane, insane frontier 
beyond COVID, way beyond COVID. Like COVID's just the, the basically, if I, keep, if I can keep using this word, the catalyst for like, oh my gosh, this biotech stuff is like, yeah, it's here to stay. Now, I'm worried that those stocks might be a little hypey right now though, because what could happen? You know, people are like, oh yay, yay, vaccine, vaccine. Oh yeah, I'll buy that stock. Well, as soon as that goes away, then, then those people will leave those stocks, right? And we'll potentially see that stock uh, fall in value. And maybe then that's the time to buy. Uh, although you never you never know. So I'm going to keep an eye on these. I'll probably be doing some more digging onto these companies this weekend. Then, catalyst number three. On December 11th, we will know if the government is shutting down or not. Obviously, no shutdown is very good for the markets. Uh, although it's kind of what we're already expecting. So maybe nothing will happen. Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell have numerous times expressed their intentions of passing a large omnibus funding bill, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a collection of a bunch of bills in a bipartisan way to keep the government funded. This is really likely to happen. Now, the odds are uh, that, uh, that this is not going to move markets much because we're kind of expecting it already. Now, if it gets delayed and the government shuts down and all of a sudden 1 million government jobs are at stake, then that means 1 million people could be out of a job with a government shutdown and all of a sudden we could have a very negative catalyst for the market. So it's leaning positive, but there is a risk factor here. Number four, on December 14th, the Electoral College votes for the president. I think the market won't react much to this unless there's something really unexpected that happens, like states selecting potentially different electors, which might end up differing from the popular vote, which could get a lot of people to question democracy in America. And then it makes you go, wait a minute, was there actually fraud? Is that why this stuff happened? Like, and, and if the answer is, yeah, duh, there was fraud, that's not going to be good for the markets. Uh, and, and if something changes that's different from what, you know, the, the electors were supposedly supposed to do, then that's not going to be good either. And this is not me trying to get political. I'm kind of dancing around these words here because I'm literally, all I'm trying to say in, in the most neutral way possible, whatever happens on December 14th, basically, if it ain't Biden coming out of the electoral college, the market's going to go, oh crap, what just happened? So not me saying it's good or bad one way or the other. I'm just saying the market is expecting a Joe Biden electoral college vote on December 14th. And if it ain't that, the market's going to move on that. Okay, then December 19th. This is a big one, especially for companies like Square. We will know by December 19th if we are going to get a stimulus package done to address the upcoming eviction crisis, the employment crisis, unemployment crisis, the lapsing of the student loan program. And this really has some far reaching consequences. First, it means cash to people, if, if we get another package, are going to blow up companies like Square in a good way. The CARES Act exploded Square's revenues, their cash app service, and Square's ability to vertically integrate pricier service to their customers is brilliant. It's like getting customers to put money in with cash app, but then also end up signing up for direct deposit and use the business credit card or debit cards they have and, and all these other services they have. It's, it's brilliant. They're on it. Like stimulus helps them a lot. Their revenue and their investments, like they are investing so much freaking money over the next six months. It's insane. This company, this company is a fintech game changer. Without a stimulus package, I do worry that some of that, that hype that's propping up Square could, could fall away. But Square's still a good play long run. And if there's another stimulus package, I, I could see that as a big catalyst for Square going, <laughs> yeah. Okay, number six. This is obviously, and this one's a little more obvious, but it is the biggest short-term downside catalyst risk that we have right now. And these are COVID cases and COVID deaths combined with short, uh, shutdowns and lockdowns to limit COVID cases and COVID deaths. Now, uh, this is, you know, not a surprise, but we could easily see cases spike over 250,000 cases, especially after Thanksgiving. Say around December 10th through 20th, yeah, two weeks after Thanksgiving, things could be pretty ugly. Deaths could also be up to two to 3,000 per day. That's like a 9-11 every day. And if this happens, well, hopefully this will be very short term because as the vaccine begins to get distributed, I think there'll be a lot more, uh, you know, fear reduction in the marketplace. And, you know, again, two weeks after Thanksgiving is kind of right around the same time we might get that approval. So you kind of got this uh, really kind of uncertain period of time there. Uh, and, and keep this in mind, too, that co think of COVID cases as like an amplifier or a damper. So if COVID cases stabilize or decline, they're going to amplify good news from other sources. 
So for example, if we get stimulus and COVID cases stabilized, that's gonna be really good for the markets. We get a budget, we get stimulus and COVID cases stabilized. There's no way the market's not going up on this kind of news. If however, cases skyrocket and things get really, really dark, but we get stimulus and we get a budget passed, well, then we could see the impact of cases actually get moderated. So those are some of my expectations as to how these things might play out. But let's try to put this together here and then come up with an action plan first. Remember before the election, I said on this channel in many, 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 many videos, get your money in the market. Things usually aren't as bad as they appear and I'm putting 70 to 80% of my money in before the election. I'm glad I did because I knew that we would get a lot of answers when the election came, which we did. We would also know if there were going to be protests and riots that were violent. And we got an answer. We didn't get those. So I'm glad I put money in because those investments have made solid gains. Neo doubled, Tesla's way up, Etsy's up, EXPI's up, you know, among the other big buys from before the election. But there's no real use looking back. Instead, we should look forward. And so here are the scenarios going forward. Best case scenario for the stock market and quite frankly, society, we get great Black Friday data. We get a vaccine approved, COVID cases level off, people stay safe during Thanksgiving, the presidential drama ends, and the government doesn't shut down and stimulus package, a stimulus package passes. Now that might sound like a wish list. It's probably because it kind of is because everything in that happening perfectly, probably not super likely, but I'm gonna give this somewhere around a 30% chance of happening. That means I'm actually decently optimistic that we're gonna have good Black Friday data that will get a vaccine approved. At some point, cases are going to level off. I think our government's not going to shut down. We'll see though. Uh, and stimulus passing, that's probably weighing this one down a bit. So I'm gonna say 30% in total on this one. Now, if all of these things happen, uh, except stimulus gets delayed to say January, or February, COVID cases continue to rise while a vaccine is distributed, the market will likely keep slowly chugging up, kind of like what it's been doing the last couple of weeks. It's been this rotating ball where we go kind of like recovery stocks, tech, recovery stocks, tech, but then it kind of slowly works its way up. This to me is probably more like a 60% scenario. This is probably the, the base case scenario of what's gonna happen. Delayed stimulus, but good data otherwise. And a vaccine approved. Now, uh, it, it's also possible that things just go nuts and go bad, right? The vaccine fails approval, COVID cases surge, stimulus fails, uh, the government shuts down, uncertainty goes up with sales data failing, and the market crashes. I put this around 10% likely. So it's possible, but that's kind of actually as much as I hate to say it, but it's kind of in line with what Bill Ackman said early on, uh, that you know it's, it's, it's a small, he's got a small hedge against a possible tragic outcome to 2020. I think that's probably what a tragic outcome to 2020 would look like. Now, breaking it down like this, I would personally rather be invested in the market with excess cash I have, probably no later than December 6th. Uh, maybe even honestly, like November 29th, like the end of November possibly even November 25th, the day before Thanksgiving. The reason for that is I, I, I am optimistic about that Black Friday data that we're going to start seeing over that weekend. And you know, this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday coming up could be an interesting time to start trying to float into the market a little bit, especially if we could get any kind of red coming up uh, on the market, we'll see. Now, a lot of you already know this, but my favorite stocks are outlined at metkevin.com slash 1337v14. You could go to that link, it's linked down below as well. Uh, if you sign up for M1 Finance, uh, you'll get to invest right into that pie. I don't actively manage your money, so you have to make your own choices there, but it kind of gives you an outline of how you could easily put money in and it automatically distributes your money into all those different stocks. It's one of the reasons M1 Finance is so convenient. Doing it manually takes forever. But, uh, you know, in, in addition to these, I'm gonna be paying specific attention, or I suppose of these, I'm gonna be paying specific attention to companies like Tesla, Etsy, Redfin, Apple, Amazon. These are sort of a great core, but then I'm also gonna be bumping up my interest on companies like Qualcomm as a 5G play, especially with Apple sales. We'll see how those do for Black Friday. AMD, Nvidia, Pinterest, big one here. Square, especially if we get stimulus. And I'm currently working on version 15 for all these stocks. In version 15, I'm thinking about changing Pinterest to be more like three to 4%. 
I might, depending on how things go and with my research this weekend, include Pfizer and Moderna, not for a COVID vaccine, but for future mRNA drugs. I think it's really fascinating and the technology blows my mind. I might bump Beyond Meat a little bit, Lemonade, Qualcomm, might reduce Target a little bit. Target's done really well for us. So we'd actually be selling, I don't think I'm gonna sell out of Target, but we'd be reducing Target at like a high. Uh, you know, they're doing great. Home Depot and Lowe's, same thing. Keep those as maybe a small exposure for that sort of COVID nesting spend that we see. But honestly, to me, it makes more sense to fund more money into these companies that I think have substantially greater growth. Like to me, Qualcomm, Tesla, or the small ones like Neo and Redfin, Lemonade Insurance, these are companies that have way more growth potential over the next five years than like, Home Depot, like Home, De I, I don't know, but I don't expect like Home Depot or Lowe's to double as fast as say like a Tesla might. Now who knows? So this kind of brings it all down to, should we hedge? Well, keep this in mind. When it comes to thinking about hedging or basically shorting the market or buying puts or whatever to have a little bit of a hedge to the market, remember that hedge funds usually do this so that they don't lose customers in the event the market falls. So that way they can tell their customers, hey, hey, we, we anticipated the market falling. Look how brilliant we are. We have an insurance policy. That's great, but insurance policies also cost money. Many hedge funds spend so much money insuring themselves and they're wrong eight out of 10 times that they end up having lower returns than the S&P 500 regularly does. So for me, this is not the market to short. Instead, this is a market for me to, you know, well, I guess I should say it makes sense to increase my exposure to stocks within the next couple weeks, honestly, quite possibly within the next week here, because I think we're gonna get positive data out of a lot of these catalysts coming out, more likely than we're going to see negative data. We'll see, the Dow ended down this week slightly. We'll see how things go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, you know, case counts aren't going to be beautiful probably tomorrow and, and Sunday again, but case counts on Monday and Tuesday tend to come in lower. That's just consistently what tends to happen. So it's not uncommon for the stock market to kind of tick up on lower cases, even though they're kind of like Fugazi cases, uh, because those are, don't seem to be like a real count on Monday and Tuesday. They always come in lower. <laughs> I, I don't understand exactly why either, but uh, anyway, those are kind of my thoughts here. So let me know what you think about this. And if you kind of like the psychology, how I think about these things, make sure you join these live streams. Live streams are part of all of the courses and you get the course material as well. The programs are great. They're linked down below. There's a reason a lot of people bundle up for these courses. It's because they love the material they get. And they also know that these aren't just these stupid, like one-time courses that are like five years old and nobody updates. I keep updating them. I keep adding content. And when people ask me, Kevin, can we get a lecture on this? Or can you answer a question about this? I either answer in the live stream or I make a lecture for it. If something's missing, I talk about it. Thank you so much for watching folks. And we'll see you in the next one.